Ah, go on, go on, go on, go on. All right, folks, how you doing? Um, I've just wrecked a uh, bandsaw blade, so uh, I'm, I needed to find a, a quick little job. Um, and this this old girl's going to be the uh, poor, unfortunate subject of the quick little job, eh? This is a uh, an old. Um, it's not even that old, I suppose, uh, but it's a floor standing press, hydraulic press that I got out of a scrap bin um, quite a few years ago now. Uh, it's been useful to have around, I just kept it outside and uh, when, I've, when I've used it I've, uh, I've balanced um, various bottle jacks and whatnot on there. Uh, I'm sure I've done it in a couple of videos, whatever, it's always been um, you know, a little bit nerve wracking just waiting for something to pow, you know, shoot out of the bloody thing, and uh, yeah, because it's, it's not, not a good way to work. So, uh, I started looking for new bottles for it, and uh, and the, the, the sort of uh, bottle that this is supposed to have on it is a inverted standard bottle jack, basically. So, it's, it's been adapted a little bit so the pickup is works when uh, when the bottle's upside down and they normally have, like this one would have had, a, uh, a plate at the, at the top of the piston to pull it all back in when you release the pressure, yeah? Because I'm sure you're aware, bottle jacks normally don't, uh, don't go back down by themselves, they need a bit of weight on them, don't they? So these things normally have four very, very large, noisy springs on them, yeah? Anyway, those inverted bottle jacks for a 30 tonner, they're quite a bit of money, so I've you know been looking around for a while and ended up spending even more money <laughs> on something that's uh, vastly superior. Yep. So what I got um, is the better type of um, ram. Yeah. So obviously that doesn't look like a bottle jack, does it? Um, Nice fat ram. This is a, again 30 tonner. Uh, but that comes with a separate two stage pump. So you've got um, a high pressure and a high volume pump. Um, yeah, you can tell by the, by the thickness of those barrels, can't you? This one's the high pressure, that's the high, high volume. Um, and a release valve. And that, that ram's got a Got the spring internally, so it should um, should retract without any funny business, you know, or the need for external springs, which are horrible. I'm sure, I'm sure you guys have used those, uh, but this type of um, press, they just they just right by your face, and springs under tension by my eyeballs always make me a bit nervous, you know. Um, I'm sure they're safe. I'm sure they are, otherwise, otherwise you wouldn't be able to buy a jack like that. And it came with a bit of hose as well. But, I tell you what, that was only a hundred quid, yeah? But if you buy the, the presses that are fitted with these uh, with these pumps and rams, they're like over a grand. So, what I want to do is fit this to this, you know, and we'll have a, we'll have a press worth millions of pounds, won't we? <laughs> uh, so, let me show you the detail at the top. The only, the only real tricky bit of work we've got to do is uh, figure out how how we're going to make that sit flush here. Yeah, and you see there's a bit of three quarter inch plate here. And originally, the upside down bottle jack would have, um, you know, attached by these two bolts here. Um, yeah. So, realistically, all we've got to do is drill a effing great big hole through this plate, isn't it? Um, reckoning that's about four inches in diameter. Uh, I don't think any of my uh, cheapo hole saws are going to make it through three quarter inch plate. Um, I doubt it's special steel, it's, it probably is just mild steel, but um, I think with what I've got handy right now, the uh, the best way for me to go about this is to tra tra chain drill it and then uh, knock it out, which is going to be yeah, it's going to be a task in itself, guys. Hey, so I cut the uh, I cut the plate off the press because I figured it'd be easier to work on it 
on the bench rather than uh, in an upside down press frame. Um, that's the ring that uh, that the pressure ring, I suppose, that the, that the ram acts against because the ram's threaded, and so it puts the puts the load onto this ring, and then this ring is meant to transmit it to uh, to our piece to our uh, press frame, isn't it? and but like before it had a cast iron foot on the on the ram that was bolted here, and I suppose it had to be this thick to prevent that from flexing and cracking and spewing all its fluid out. But uh, either way, with this with this off, I was looking at rather than chain drilling it because that would be a little bit boring. Um, getting it in the getting it in the lathe. Uh, unfortunately, my lathe isn't the biggest. Uh, it's small but perfectly formed, you know. Uh, but either way, I couldn't get this whole piece of metal in, so I just, you know, that's cutting at that line and using this piece would be the, the maximum I could fit in the lathe, um, which I've now pretty much decided to do because that will give us a nice, nice clean bore. And like looking at this ring, this this is already going to spread the load. It's not like we're we're trying to prevent a piece of cast iron from cracking. Uh, this is already a fantastic way of spreading the load because it's nice and thick and that. Uh, and what? Yeah, I've pretty much convinced myself that it will be okay to to cut this down a bit and drill a big hole in it, which is going to leave the edges a bit uh, a bit small. But if I get it on the uh, get it on the frame and still feel like it's not uh, not got enough strength in it, I can put some put some webs or, or gussets behind this. You know, so that's what we'll do. I'll see you at the lathe. Okay, so we've got a uh, nice big lump of the press chucked up. Not chucked up, what do you call it when it's on a face plate? Uh, face plated up in the lathe. Uh, clearance, uh, I've got to watch what I do with this carriage because the carriage won't clear down at the bottom here. Um, not sure, I'll probably run it quite slow. I'm a bit worried about it spitting out. Face plate always, always makes me a bit nervous. Uh, but I'll be ready to catch it in my teeth if, uh, if anything happens, all right? But after their son Daniel was killed, the whole world changed. Monica went through from everyone, even Jack. Wait till next time, she said, Look at the pile of swarf I've made, eh? Hey? Alright, nearly there, nearly there. Just, uh... Kind of boring, and uh, you know, changing speeds as a go. Okay, so we've got the uh, nice bit of heavy stuff welded back to the frame of the press. The only thing left to do now is uh, knock up a little bracket for the for the pump, which I, I suppose wants to be round about here, sort of uh, elbow level. So I don't know, somewhere around there. Uh, the, the pumps themselves. Uh, let's, uh, just stick a couple of plates on there. Not sure it has to be anything too elaborate, does it? Hey, probably wants to be nice and solid, though. Okay, so here she is, all mounted up. Um, we're going to leave the the industrial patina on it for now. <laughs> uh, bled, got some oil in it, and uh, what seems to work seems to work satisfactorily. But there's only really one way to find out, isn't there? Right? Um, what? doing here nice uh not the smoothest but um nice nice positive action anyway i suppose um i haven't got any jobs for it right now just one of those things 
never really know when you're going to have to use a press, do you? But um, one of the things I was wanting to try with a press was breaking up aluminium castings so I could recast them. So I suppose we can give that a go, can't we? Alright, uh, let's, uh, let's have a look at this. This is uh, my neighbour's OHV Briggs out of his ride on mower and it threw a rod. It's still, I don't know, it didn't do that much damage to the block. You can see, see at the bottom there. Um, probably with the right bits it could have been could have been made to run again but I had a, uh, a big old side rail for 12 horse and I gave that to him and he gave me this because he knows I like to melt stuff down um, you know I don't really, uh, don't really feel guilty about this no one really no one really has anything nice to say about the OE3 Briggs today I don't think they're even made in uh, Massachusetts anymore. But I have a, well, I had a little little OHV Briggs mower, which I found really nice and reliable. But you know, whatevs, whatevs. Either way, it's curtains for this old girl, isn't it? Eh? <laughs> okay. Let's see how far we get on. Um, uh, maybe I should rearrange my my dunnage. Let's, uh, let's just get it sitting flat. We'll try and we'll try and punch the um, the crankcase bearing straight out of it. In the most un ungodly manner. That's probably a bit better, isn't it? A bit less chance of it flying out. Here we go. Pushing the dowels out the wrong side now, haven't we? Oh, this could this could get nasty very quickly, couldn't it? Hey. Eh? All right, switch to the high pressure pump. Oh, I didn't I didn't bleed. This is the first time I've operated it. Oh, I was talking. Oh. Yeah, I smashed the window in one of my cars doing this, smashing up. Aluminium castings. I've not bled that. That's a. Uh, it's not going to work, is it? Back off again. The uh, it's only the quarter light in the front door. Can't remember what we're doing now. I remember the occasion. I remember that like it was yesterday. I can start my, uh, my copycat hydraulic, hydraulic press channel now, can't I? Okay. We're not getting much out of the, the uh, high pressure pump here. Oh, I think I'll just put air back into it, haven't I? I bled it on the, uh, on the high volume pump. You can probably go through it with this, to be honest. Yeah, of course you can. Of course we can. Pop. Oh, that's the max travel. I perhaps need to drill another couple of holes in here, you know. Let's uh, let's get this high pressure bled. Okay, let's uh, let's see if we can relieve this precious aluminium of its uh, pesky uh, cylinder liner. You know, again, makes me a little bit nervous, especially with that sort of antics. Go nice and slowly. <laughs> Hopefully, it won't try and kill me. Okay? But you never know. And what would be worse if it had uh, killed a camera, isn't it? Oh, that'd be a tragedy. Oh, it's just, uh, just making a hole through the um, pushrod housing at the minute. We shall continue on our little journey down to the cylinder wall. OK, 
And here we go. Cylinder wall contact. Okay, and then we'll try the, the high pressure pump again. Ah, uh, yeah, that seems to be better. We are moving. Whoa! <laughs> You know, it's like springs and stuff, anything like that. Always got the potential to fuck you up big time, isn't it? Okay. Oh, on the big pump again, make resistance, back to the little pump. Uh, it's nice, I like these, uh, I like this stuff pumps out. Pretty Gucci. Pretty bloody handy. Alright, this is definitely a much nicer uh, press than it would have been in the first place. I have used both types and you know it just feels like a nicer nicer press. It, all the components are designed to be impressed rather than components that are you know designed for a completely different purpose that you're using in a press. Well, it doesn't show any times of a uh, fracture in the cylinder. This is this is making me nervous, gentlemen. Oh yeah, I have watched too many uh hydraulic press channels for me to be comfortable about this. Um, things always fly out at maximum velocity, don't they? Let's release the pressure on this. You can still hear a bit of air in there, you know? But it all collects. There should be a, a gauge up there. That didn't come with it. Um, that's, where, that's where I've been bleeding it anyway. Let's try and smash the, the rest of the case off first. Here we go, genuine uh, firefighter's hat <laughs> and, a, and a bit of mesh there just to stand behind. Oh, I feel so much safer, you know. Okay, I think we call it a quits with the uh, with the science experiments now, lads. Before I uh, before I wreck something, but uh, let's have a look at that. Well, apart from anything else, it's been a very interesting exercise. Uh, you can see see here the uh, the pattern on the the aluminium. Um, and you know, cast iron cylinder liner, sleeve, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that kind of suggests that the the liner, you know, here you can see the the roughness on the on the cast iron. Yeah, the liner is uh, actually in the mould, um, and the aluminium is, is die cast around it. It's definitely a die cast uh, die cast um, die cast thingy bob. Um, you know, you don't normally have these sort of pips on uh, something that's been sand cast. They're completely unnecessary. These are the the sprues, if you like, or the vents or whatever for injecting injecting the alley or, or letting the uh, letting the air out the mould, isn't it? Um, so uh, so yeah, interesting stuff. Interesting stuff indeed. That's you know why it didn't. Uh, I was expecting I was expecting this to sort of fold to be honest um separate away from the ball i don't know why i just thought it was uh, going to be a 
traditionally lined cylinder but if you do it like this I suppose you've not got to worry about the sleeve moving inside the um, inside the block but it's sort of a one one time thing isn't it you're not not going to be able to press this out and put another one in are you um, interesting very very interesting <laughs> very interesting Oh well, uh, that's the that's the press anyway. I uh, hope you enjoyed that wanton destruction at the end. It's not really, you know, it's for a reason. Right. I'm not. Maybe I used to be in the habit of just smashing shit up for fun, but um, you know, I've uh, I like to think that I've grown out of that now. Um, I still like the odd explosion, you know. But uh, what? <coughs> Try not to blow up anything that's not already uh, not already rubbish, I suppose. Uh, yeah, there we go. Um, I've seen these uh, presses with with these cylinders mounted in them. You know, they're sort of upwards of a grand. Um, I'm sure they're available cheaper, but uh, you know, sort of 1,200 pounds sort of thing for, for one of these frames. And my total cost on this are the uh, three cheap Chinese carbide bits that it took me to bore that hole. Um, you know, and. Uh, and what 100 quid for the for the pump and the ram um so i think this is a, a pretty good use for the old hydraulic press certainly a lot nicer to use than the the bottle jack types which this was originally and um now i can press things without balancing a load of shit on top of each other yeah all right i'll see you again soon bye bye